Ix, the primordial goddess of the night, and Erebus, the primordial god of darkness. A perfect pair, for what is night without darkness? Together they were the parents to many gods and goddesses who had important roles in Greek mythology. And their family tree began at the beginning, where there was nothing in the universe until chaos gave birth to Gaia, Tartarus, Nyx, and Erebus. Following their birth, Gaia created the Earth, and Tartarus created his pit. But what did Nyx and Erebus do, you ask? Well, they fell in love. And that love resulted in their first children, the twins, Ether, the primordial god of light, and Himera, the primordial goddess of the day. And once Uranus created the sky, a family of four flew through it, bringing light and day and darkness and night to the sky for the very first time. Later on, Nyx and Erebus made their home down in the pit of Tartarus, where together they gave birth to a flock of immortal children. It's important to note that another version of this myth had Nyx having these children by herself. But anyways, these children weren't primordials. They were personified spirits, or daemons. Daemon gods and goddesses that represented negative aspects of life. They were powerful, dangerous, and tricky immortals. The first was deadly Moros, daemon god of doom. He was one of the most feared gods of all, and would drive many deities and mortals to their eternal dooms. Next were the violent Kyrus, the daemon goddesses of violent death. They loved being on battlefields where they could feast on the violently killed. Third was peaceful Thanatos, the daemon god of peaceful death. Those passing peacefully in their sleep were gently touched by his hand. Next was tired Hypnus, the daemon god of sleep. No one wished to anger him, or all beings needed to enter his domain. Fifth were the helpful Onoroi, the daemon spirits of dreams. They brought both good dreams and nightmares to all the beings of the world on orders of their master. Sixth was sad Oasis. She brought woe, distress, and suffering to the world. Next was quick Momos, the daemon god of blame. He always had criticisms on the tip of his tongue. Following were the all-seeing Moirai, the goddesses of fate, the keepers of destiny, and the threads of mortals. Next was revenge-filled Nemesis, the goddess of retribution. She who cared for balance. Nothing too good and nothing too bad was her policy. Apate, the daemon goddess of deceit, came after. She brought lies and fraud wherever she roamed. Next was friendly Philotus, the daemon goddess of friendship and affection. She was definitely one of Nyx's friendlier children. Following was Old Man Juras, the daemon god of old age. Every mortal feared his name. Second to last was mischievous Eris, the daemon goddess of discord. Eris was the architect for the Trojan War and was also mother to many of her own terrifying children. The last of Nyx's children and the future soul deliverer was Charon, the ferryman of the dead. His eternal job would come to bear fruit once the underworld was created. And there it is. I give you the children of Nyx and Erebus. Hey, if you enjoyed my video, then please give it a thumbs up. There's plenty more videos about mythology, fairy tales, and folklore on the way, so make sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon so you don't miss out. Also, if you would like me to do a video on a subject or character within mythology, please let me know in the comments. Well, that's all for now. Cheers until the next wild mythology.